Howdy, fellow travelers. I wanted to do something a little different. I've been working on some big video projects, and the scripts are taking a long time, so I wanted to get out something sort of quick and digestible in time for Halloween. So I figure I'm going to try this different format here. I wanted to talk about something that's very, I feel, relatable to anybody who's grown up in the mass media era, and then which is uh, basically your childhood nightmare fuel. The things in media that scared you, that maybe were scary in retrospect or maybe weren't scary but because you were a small child and you know you had an incomplete brain and you lacked maturity and life experience uh, innocuous things terrified you uh regardless that's something that i feel like everybody goes through i always love seeing other youtubers talk about theirs and i wanted to talk about some of mine because i've never seen them come up before the first one i want to talk to you about is this movie called conrad that so Conrad was originally a 70s German children's book called Conrad, the Factory Made Boy. And, and then 1983, it was made into a German film. And then that film was remade as an American made-for-TV film in 1985. That's how we got Conrad with a K. Now, first off, before we even watch the movie, just the poster for it is really creepy. We have this, like almost airbrushed looking rosy cheeked child with this like evil bowl cut this is like this is like if mandark was an earthbound character and then you just the way like the lettering and this is like something out of beyond the black rainbow it's very upsetting and off-putting and the thing is when you watch it as a kid there's one scene in particular of this movie that is absolutely terrifying let me go back. So the premise of Conrad is that there's this cool, like, bohemian old lady who lives by herself, and she's, like, an artist who makes a living off of commissions, and she has, like, her big gay musician friend who's, like, a, a large guy with a mustache who's very fun, and I liked him a lot when I was a kid. And, um, and basically one day she gets uh, a delivery, and it's a, it's a tin can, and she opens it up, and there's a little child inside of it. And I've never read the book, but based off of the illustrations for it and the German version of the film, the book, it's the original version of it, it's like kind of magical realism quirkiness, like something out of Roald Dahl, where she opens up the tin and there's a small boy inside and he, and she goes, uh, and he goes, hi, I'm Conrad, I'm the factory made boy. And he's like, oh, you're so small. And he's like, well, yeah, they have to, they have to shrink me down before, you know, to ship me. But now just put this powder on me and I'll get big. Wee. Like, it seems very fun. And then in the American version, they made it a fucking nightmare. Get out of this container immediately. I am. I am. I did it. I did it. What more do you want from me? So, so she gets, she gets this barrel wheeled up, wheeled up to her. And like, you know, this is like a breaking bad barrel. Like this is a barrel that was made to like to hide bodies. It's so ominous looking. <laughs> So she takes she takes the barrel inside of her house, this nightmare barrel, and she opens it, and inside, what li literally just looks like like the corpse of a child, like the desiccated corpse of a child. The makeup on him is so off-putting. They make him look so pale, and like the lines, it's like you can see his ribs through his back or something. It's really upsetting. <laughs> And then when she opens it, this disembodied voice starts yelling at her to pour the nutrient solution on him. And it's just like, while well, the synthesizer music's going nuts, there's this angry male voice going, pour the nutrient solution! Pour the nutrient solution over the contents of this container immediately. Nutrient solution, nutrient solution. Pour the nutrient solution over the contents of this container immediately. Okay, okay. Pull the nutrient solution! And she's like very obviously overwhelmed and upset. I did it! I did it! What more do you want from me? And like just just thinking about it is like giving it's like it was like uncut gems for like for me as a kid. Just like, oh my god, this is this this is the so overwhelming and so scary and intense. Combined with that like horror imagery of the dead child in a can that she has to like 
cut open an envelope full of slime and pour onto it. It's a Kafka-esque. Ooh, it's so creepy. And then, like... And then the rest of the movie is, like... So anyways, what this movie is, after this, it, the, the thing is, I love this movie as a kid because aside from this moment of horror at the beginning, it's mostly just like a very sweet, fun movie about like, what if a cool old lady, like, it was like, what if you, what if a kid had like a cool grandma that bought him all the things he wanted and was like very fun. It's just like a cool wish fulfillment of like, this is like when I visit grandma and she buys me things. And the story, as an adult, like, this feels very this feels very queer coded in a way like I feel this is like an old woman who never had a child of her own in, in a time when that was unusual um so yeah and like uh, there's this really cool like ra there's this rad 80s fashion montage where she's like what do you think of that <laughs> boy you're gonna wake them up when you wear that kid <laughs> Because the thing about the thing about the thing, the, the story is basically like, since Conrad was raised in a factory to be perfect, he's actually a, a bat an imperfect child because children are imperfect. And it's like considering when it was made, it's probably supposed to be like some like anti-Soviet thing where it's like about like how oh they they want to get rid of our individuality and make us all the same, but dismissing that though it is pretty creepy and like just like a cool sci-fi concept the whole like oh yeah they're literally growing children in a factory to be it, it's kind of like spy kids now that i think about it like the first spy kids when they had all those robots robot children yeah you know what i'm, I'm gonna sure i'm gonna say it conrad was the spy kids of the 80s maybe that's gonna be my clickbait title <laughs> no, actually, I have a better clickbait idea. There's one part in this movie where the kid wears a blue and pink striped sweater, and he looks like the Undertale child. And also, the main lady, she mostly wears, like, these, like, long muumuu dresses. So, like, I want to, like, edit the two of them together so it looks like the child and Toriel from Undertale. And that can be, like, secret origin of Undertale found, not clickbait, question mark. <laughs> That's stupid, I'm sorry. And so anyways, yeah, so you just have all these fun fashion montages. It's like, oh, he gets to eat candy because he's only ever gotten to eat goop. It's so, f it's really just cool, fun, gentle TV. But then what happens is the people from the factory show up and they're like, yeah, you didn't order this boy. He was sent out by mistake. We're going to have to recall him. And they're like, no, this is a child, you monster. And then it becomes like this sort of like low budget like corporate espionage action thing of them like sneaking into the lab to rescue conrad before they can like reprogram him and send him out to another family and then it ends with them like blowing up the the factory by mistake well, after they give a speech about how like we need to let children be children and live for their own sake and not be like perfect robots that obey every command which is i still think honestly a pretty good message to take to heart you know the whole letting letting kids you know be messy and make mistakes and grow up and I think that's a good message, but yeah, just that one, that makes the one scene so different. It's like it's it's like they were bored and they were just like, no one's gonna watch this. Let's just get really fucking crazy with this scene. No, no, no. It's like an uh, it's like a look around you bit. That's what it is. It feels like like um. <laughs> Oh yeah, the the Helvetica scenario. This is just the Helvetica scenario from, from Look Around You. It's not being satirical. It actually is just terrifying. 
like yeah this is like also this is just the production values of this it looks and feels like a like a pbs special so maybe that's a part of it too just because my brain is conditioned to associate this aesthetic with like gentle children's television there being this upsetting sci-fi imagery of a child's corpse that much worse Ugh. yeah no i'm sorry conrad conrad is a very cool movie and I still recommend it. There's nothing else. Like, it's so... It's such a different movie. It does not follow the usual act structure you would expect for this type of movie. It's not trying to be, like, a four-quadrant blockbuster crowd pleaser. It's just, like, a very quiet little... I wasn't surprised to find out it was based on a story. It has that feel. I love... I am always in the pocket for that type of thing. Literally, my favorite movie of all time is Enemy Mine by Wolfgang Peterson. Just because that very simple but very broad and powerful story about, like, becoming friends with your enemy and like learning to f find value in your life just really connected with me in a way that i don't think any movie has before or since i'm sorry yeah so that's conrad the factory made boy